as is Mr. Burchett from uh, the great state of Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Farah, or Farah, how do you say that? Farah? It's Farah, sir. Farah, all right. Um, a recent report found that 84% of automakers surveyed share or sell personal data. Should Americans worry that automation of commercial vehicles will further compromise um, our privacy? Congressman, certainly appreciate the question. I, I, I don't think that they, they should be. I think that the, the companies within our organization are incredibly motivated to safeguard that data. This is data that is important for the performance of the vehicle. That's going to make the roadways safer for your constituents. And so I think there is a very strong alignment between what the industry is doing to improve roadway safety, but also with those that, that care very deeply about privacy, as you do. Well, I appreciate that answer, but it still, uh, they're sharing that personal data. And some of that data has very little, I feel like, to do with automobile or, or safety on the road. And I'm wondering, uh, Will we be able to, uh, and we know what they're sharing, and some of that stuff I've, I've seen is just not, to me, it just doesn't share any of those um, attributes that you said. So uh, I hope you, we're going to hold you to that. I hope you are aware of that. Well, let, let me ask you to switch gears a little bit. Can the federal government improve regulations to support private sector innovation and investment? Congressman, they absolutely can. I think one thing that, that we've noted today is that I think that there is a very strong need uh, for the for FMCSA to move forward on an autonomous trucking specific rulemaking. This is something that there should be bipartisan support for that. What we have right now is a situation where our industry, private sector capital, wants to be put to work. It wants to develop safer, safer roads, ease the supply chain. Uh, there are certain issues that we would like to see tackled by the federal government, and that is a way that we can ultimately help the domestic industry to continue to invest that capital and create jobs. Okay. Um, Mr. Ermson, the sensor data, it's collected, shared, and used. How is that? How are y'all doing that? Uh, thank you for the question. So we gather data from our vehicles to support the development and improving the safety of the system. That data stays within uh, our company. We have in place, uh, we're, well, we're compliant with the required privacy policies around this, uh, privacy rules. Uh, and we have procedures in place to respond to law enforcement requests as well. I don't trust the federal government getting a lot of this information. How, how can I trust you all? Uh, I think it's in our interest uh, to, to protect this data, right? The, you know, we're investing significant amount of money uh, to develop the technology, and intellectual property is core to our success. Okay, have any of these privacy concerns been brought to your attention related to sensor data? I'm certainly aware of the, the general uh, set of concerns around it, uh, and certainly share them. What steps are y'all taking to protect operational systems, um, software, and data? Cybersecurity. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, we have a dedicated staff uh, of cybersecurity experts. It's about 50 people that are working to both secure our corporate infrastructure and also secure the product. We obviously, as I, I said previously, our intellectual property is critical to our success, and so it's very much in our interest to protect it. Mr. Spear, um, what's what's the ATA doing to um, to ensure automated commercial motor vehicles are not vulnerable to cyber attacks? We have a technology maintenance council, law enforcement advisory board. Uh, we work closely with the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance to develop a program called SciWatch, and it's built on protocols and guidance from DHS, DOJ, DOT, and those protocols are then uh, shared with our membership, large, medium, and small. So we're setting those standards, we're, we're sharing it, Creating those best practices are absolutely imperative. So as we adopt more technology that could be subject to a cyber attack, we want those protocols put in place. We do monthly calls with the administrator TSA, uh, specific on cyber, and they are actually offering to train our staff so that we have a better granular understanding for our mode and those best practices then are in turn shared with our membership. So that collaboration is very robust and I'm very encouraged by that. We need to do more, but I do believe that we're doing the right things on this front.